In module 1, we have learned about the solution of the first order linear differential equation under the category homogeneous, non-homogeneous, exact and non-exact differential equations. In module 2, we will learn about the existence and uniqueness property of the first order linear differential equations. Given a linear differential equations, whether the solution exists and if the solution exists, how many solutions we will get, whether it is an infinite number of solutions or whether it is no solutions. These are the few questions which we will answer in our module 2. We now look into the existence property of the first order differential equation. We consider the nonlinear differential equation of the form dx dt equal to f tx, x t0 equal to x0 where f is a given function of t and x defined and continuous in some neighborhood of the point t0, x0. Our aim is to construct a suitable function satisfying the differential equation in some neighborhood of t0 and the graph of f contain the point t0, x0. We have also seen that there are initial value problems which have one solution more than one solution or no solution at all. Here we want to discuss the conditions under which we can answer these questions. <coughs> Recall the linear differential equation of the form dx dt plus atx equal to bt. Based on the solution procedure, we can now state an existence and uniqueness theorem for this non-homogeneous linear differential equation as follows. Let the function a t and v t be continuous on the interval i a b and let t 0 belongs to i. Then there exists a unique solution x t to the initial value problem 3 satisfying a given initial condition x t 0 equal to x 0 on the interval i. The above theorem gives the sufficient conditions for existence of a unique solution on the entire interval i where the functions a t and b t are continuous. Consider the following example with the differential equation dx dt plus x by t equal to 2 where t is positive with the initial condition x 1 equal to 1. Now, according to the previous theorem 0 0.1, this differential equation 4 with initial condition 5 will have a unique solution and we can easily check that solution to be x t equal to t plus 1 by t. In fact, the general solution of the differential equation 4 is given by x t is equal to t plus c by t. Now, please note that the previous theorem says that our a t and b t have to be continuous. In this example, the a t is 1 by t and b t is 2, beta, which are two continuous function in the interval 1 and 2. We can observe that the solution of the initial value problem 4 and 5 tends to infinity as t tends to 0. This may not surprise us as the coefficient 2 by t has a point of discontinuity at t equal to 0. We consider the same differential equation, but with a new initial condition x 1 equal to 1 given by equation number 6. Then again by the previous theorem 0 0.1, the initial value problem 4 with the initial condition 6 will have a unique solution and it is given by x t equal to t. Now, this may surprise us as the solution behaves very nicely at the point t equal to 0. So, we conclude that the solutions of the initial value problems dx dt plus a t x equal to b t, x t 0 equal to x 0 
are not necessarily discontinuous at the point where the coefficients are discontinuous. If a solution is not continuous at some points, it is only those points where the coefficients are not continuous. Now we consider a nonlinear initial value problem 1 to 2, then the situation may quite be different. In general, there is no relation between the region where the function f t x is continuous and the region where the solution exists. Let us take an example where we consider the following nonlinear differential equation of the form dx dt is equal to x square x 0 equal to x 0, where x 0 is positive given by equation number 7. If you solve this differential equation, its general equation solution is given by x t equal to minus 1 by t plus c and the solution of the initial value problem will be given by x t equal to x 0 divided by 1 minus x 0 t. It is to be noted that the nonlinear function x square, since it is a polynomial function, it is continuous for all t belongs to R, but the solution is going to be unbounded at t equal to 1 by x 0 and hence it is valid only in the interval minus infinity to 1 by x 0. So, at this point, we may ask the following questions. Number 1, under what condition or what conditions we have one or more than one solutions of, of the problem 1, 2. Number 2, if it is a solution, whether it is a unique solution or not. And number 3, once we have conditions for existence and uniqueness of the solution of the problem 1, 2 then how can we find the solution analytically or approximately? Consider the scalar differential equation 1 and 2 and ask the existence of a solution x. Example 0 0.2 shows that any general existence theorem about existence of a nonlinear initial value problem may give assurance only in the small neighborhood of the initial point. So, this problem is a local problem since the existence is described in the neighborhood of t 0 x 0. To deal with this problem, we make certain hypothesis on f in some rectangle centered at t 0 x 0. This will mean that we can apply the local result of this section at every point in a region d in which f satisfies some hypothesis. Suppose f is continuous in D and that t 0 x 0 is an arbitrary point of some domain D. The first step towards the existence result is to show that the initial value problem d x d t equal to f x t 0 equal to x 0 is equivalent to the following integral equation x t is equal to x 0 plus integration t to t 0 f s d s where t belongs to the interval i. We now prove lemma 1 which says a function x t is a solution of the initial value problem d x d t equal to f x t 0 equal to x 0 on an interval i if and only if x t is a solution of the integral equation 8 on i. So, the proof goes like this, if x is a solution of d x d t equal to f on i satisfying x t 0 equal to x 0, we have d x d t equal to f given by equation number 9. Integrating 9 from t 0 to t on i, we obtain x t minus x t 0 is equal to integration t to t 0 f s x d x, where t belongs to i given by equation number 10. Now, imposing the initial condition 2 
we see that x satisfies equation 8. Conversely, if x t is a continuous solution of 8, then by the continuity of the function f, the right hand side of 8 is a differential. Hence, by the fundamental theorem of calculus applied to 8, we have that x satisfies the differential equation d x d t equal to f and putting t equal to t 0 in 8, we have x t 0 equal to x 0 and this ends the proof of lemma 1. With the help of this lemma, we will establish the existence of a solution 1, 2 by proving the existence of a solution 8. So, now our problem is reduced to find a solution of the associated integral equation that is now we want to find a function such that it satisfies 8. Now, if we can integrate the right hand side that is f t x is equal to g t, then we can find the solution of the problem, but in all other cases solution of the integral equation is not so easy to find. Therefore, next we try to approximate the solution of the integral equation. Let us start with the initial condition x 0 as our first guess that is we want to check whether x 0 is a solution. The first approximation is given by x 1 t is equal to x 0 plus integration t to t 0 f s d s t belongs to i. If x 1 t equal to x 0, then x 0 is the solution and we stop the procedure. But if x 1 t is not equal to x 0, then we try to improve our approximation by choosing x 1 t as a better approximation of x t that is x 2 is equal to x 0 plus integration t to t 0 f s x 1 d s given by equation number 12. If x 2 is equal to x 1, then we are done. If not, we proceed further as before. In this way, we can define a sequence of approximate solution as follows x j plus 1 t equal to x 0 plus integration t to t 0 f s x j d s where j equal to 0 1 2 3 dot 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 given by equation number 13. These approximations x n t are called the successive approximations or Pickard's iterates. We have just learned how to calculate an approximate solution of the differential equation which we obtained in the form x and t which are also known as Pickard's iterates. Our next step is to find an interval where these x n's are convergent. In other words, if you plot them graphically, we need to find interval which will contain the graph x and t. If you do that, you will come with a expression which is known as Lipsy's condition. Let us now learn about the Lipsy's condition. We now need to find the interval in which this x and t's of 13 are convergent. In other words, we want to find a rectangle in which the graph of x n will be contained. Let us first assume f and del f del x are continuous function on a closed rectangle R given by the points t x where mod of t minus t 0 is less or equal to a, mod of x minus x 0 less or equal to b centered at t 0 x 0. Thus, the functions f and del f del x are bounded above by constants m positive and k positive respectively such that mod of f is less or equal to m and mod of del f del x is less or equal to k. Lemma 2, if del f del x is continuous in R and if there exists a positive constant k such that mod of f t x 2 minus f t x 1 is less or equal to k times mod of x 2 minus x 1, 
T x 1 and T x 2 belongs to R for all point T x in R. The proof goes like this, if T x 1 and T x 2 are 2 points in R and assume that x 1 is greater than x 2, then by Rolle's mean value theorem, there exists a number eta between x 1 and x 2 such that f t x 2 minus f t x 1 is equal to del f del x t eta x 2 minus x 1. Since the point t eta is also in R, mod of del f del x t eta is less or equal to k and we obtain mod of f t x 2 minus f t x 1 is less or equal to k times mod of x 2 minus x 1 given by equation number 15, valid whenever t x 1 and t x 2 are in R. Therefore, we come to the definition, a function f that satisfies an inequality of the form 15 for all t x 1, t x 2 in a region capital R is said to satisfy a Lipschitz condition in capital R and k is called the Lipschitz constant. The above argument shows that if f and del f del x are continuous on R, then f satisfies a Lipschitz condition in R. However, the converse is not true, that is there are functions f satisfying the Lipschitz condition in a region, but do not have a continuous partial derivative with respect to x there. For example, if we take f equal to t mod x defined in any region containing 0, 0. In our existence result, we need to assume f satisfies a Lipschitz condition in x and not the strong assumption about the continuity of del f del x. In the second example, we take f is equal to x to the power 1 by 3 in the rectangle R of the form T x, where mod T is less or equal to 1 and mod x is less or equal to 2. Then f does not satisfy a Lipschitz condition in R. To establish this, we need only to produce a suitable pair of points for which 15 fails to hold for any constant k. Let us consider the point t x 1 and t 0 with minus 1 less or equal to t less or equal to 1 and x 1 greater than 0. Then f t x 1 minus f t x 0 divided by x 1 minus 0 is equal to x 1 to the power 1 third divided by x 1 which is equal to x 1 to the power minus 2 third. Now, choosing x 1 positive sufficiently small, it is clear that k equal to x 1 to the power minus 2 by 3 can be made larger than any pre-assigned constant. Therefore, 15 fails to hold for any k. Thus, we have seen there exist some functions f and the region capital R, where f does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition. The nonlinear function f is equal to x to the power 1 by 3 may satisfy Lipschitz condition in some other rectangle. For example, if we take R 1 equal to some T x, where mod T less or equal to 1 and mod of x minus 2 is less than 1, then we see that f satisfies Lipschitz condition. Here we may observe R 1 does not contain T 0. Therefore, we do anything with this successive approximation, we must show that they are defined properly. This means in order to define x j on some interval i, we must first know that the point x x j remain in the interval r for every s in i. Lemma 3. We define alpha to be the smaller of the positive numbers a and b by m, where m equal to maximum of mod f t and x belongs to capital R. 
then the successive approximations x j given by 13 are defined on the interval j, which is defined as t such that mod of t minus t 0 is less than alpha. And on this interval mod of x j minus x 0 is less or equal to m mod of t minus t 0 less or equal to b, where z equal to 0, 1, 2 dot 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 given by equation 16. We prove it by mathematical induction. We observe that x 0 is defined on j and satisfies 16 with j equal to 0 on capital J. Now, assume for any j equal to n greater or equal to 1, x n is defined and satisfies 16 on the interval capital J. That is, T x n belongs to capital R and the inequality 16 holds. x n plus 1 is defined on the interval capital J as S x n belongs to capital R. To complete the rest of the proof, we need to show that for t belongs to capital J, x n plus 1 t remains in R or analytically that x n plus 1 satisfies 16 with j equal to n plus 1. But from the induction hypothesis and 13, we have mod of x n plus 1 minus x 0 is equal to mod of integration t to t 0 f s x n d s is less or equal to integration t to t 0 mod of f s x n d s, which is less or equal to m times mod of t minus t 0 less or equal to m alpha less or equal to b. And this completes the proof of this lemma. Theorem 0.2. If f is a continuous function of t and x in a closed and bounded in rectangle R and satisfies the Lipschitz condition in R, then the successive approximations x j given by 13 converges uniformly on the interval j given by t such that mod t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha to a solution x of the differential equation 1 that satisfies the initial condition 2. The proof goes like this. Lemma 3 shows that the successive approximations x j are defined on the interval j. To prove the convergence of the sequence x j on the interval capital J, we write the identity x j is equal to x 0 plus x 1 minus x 0 plus dot dot x j minus x j minus 1, which is equal to x 0 plus summation m equal to 1 to j minus 1 x m plus 1 t minus x m. Clearly, the sequence x j converges if and only if the infinite series summation m equal to 1 to infinity x m plus 1 minus x m converges. The next step is to estimate the difference between x j and x j plus 1. We work on the interval t 0 less or equal to t less or equal to t 0 plus alpha to the right of t 0. We define r j is equal to mod of x j plus 1 minus x j, where j equal to 0, 1, 2 dot dot. Then using the definition 13 and the Lipschitz condition 15, we will get r j equal to mod of x j plus 1 minus x j, which is equal to mod of integration t 0 to t f s x j minus f s x j minus 1 d s, which is less or equal to integration t 0 to t mod of f s x j minus f s x j minus 1 d s, which is less or equal to k times integration t 0 to t mod of x j minus x j minus 1 d s. This you get by using the Lipschitz condition 15 and this is equal to k times integration t 0 to t r j minus 1 d s j equal to 1 to dot dot dot. 
for j equal to 0 we have from 14 r 0 t is equal to mod of x 1 minus x 0 which is equal to mod of integration t 0 to t f s x 0 d s which is less or equal to mod of f s x 0 d s and which is less or equal to m times t minus t 0 given by equation 18. By using the principle of mathematical induction, we will have R j is less or equal to m times k to the power j t minus t 0 to the power j plus 1 divided by j plus 1 factorial. The case j equal to 0 of 19 is already established. Assume that 19 is true for j equal to p minus 1 for some integer p greater than 1. Then 17 gives on using the induction hypothesis r p is less or equal to k integration t 0 to t r p minus 1 d s which is less or equal to k times integration t 0 to t m k to the power p minus 1 s minus t 0 whole to the power p by p factorial d s which is equal to m times k to the power p t minus t 0 to the power p plus 1 divided by p plus 1 factorial which is 19 for j equal to p and hence this is the proof for 19. Similarly, we can prove the analog of the inequality 19 for the interval t 0 minus alpha less or equal to t less or equal to t 0. Then we have r p is less or equal to m k to the power j mod of t minus t 0 to the power j plus 1 divided by j plus 1 factorial which is less or equal to m k alpha to the power j plus 1 divided by k into j plus 1 factorial where j equal to 0 1 2 dot dot mod of t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha given by equation 20. It follows from 20 that the series summation j equal to 0 to infinity r j is dominated on the interval mod t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha by the series of positive constants m by k summation j equal to 0 to infinity k alpha to the power j plus 1 divided by j plus 1 factorial which converges to m by k e to the power k alpha. By the comparison test, the series summation j equal to 0 to infinity r j uniformly converges on the interval j given by t such that mod of t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha. In view of the definition of r j, this implies the absolute convergence of mod t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha of the series summation j equal to 0 to infinity x j plus 1 minus x j. Since x j equal to x 0 plus summation m equal to 0 to j minus 1 x m plus 1 minus x m, this also proves the convergence of the sequence x j for every t in the interval j to some function t which we call as x t. Since each x n is a continuous function and converges to x is uniform therefore the limit function x t is a continuous function. We will now show that the function x satisfies the integral equation 8 on the interval j. Since x n plus 1 t equal to x 0 plus integration t 0 to t f s x n d s, x t is equal to x 0 plus limit n tends to infinity integration t 0 to t f n x d s. From the uniform convergence of x n to x and the continuity of the function f, we will get x t equal to x 0 plus integration t 0 to t f s x s d s. This proves the existence of the solution x t. Now, under the assumption of the theorem, we can also prove that the solution is unique. 
Let ut and vt be any two solution of the initial value problem 1, 2 and let phi t is equal to mod of ut minus vt. Then phi t 0 equal to 0 and phi t is less or equal to integration t 0 to t mod of f s u s minus f s v s d s which is less or equal to k integration t 0 to t phi s d s given by equation 24. We rewrite the last inequality 24 as d d t of e to the power minus k t minus t 0 integration t 0 to t phi s d s is less or equal to 0 given by 25. Integrating this inequality from t 0 to t we have phi t less or equal to 0 and since phi t greater or equal to 0 this implies phi t is equal to 0 and hence u t is equal to v t for all t belongs to the interval j. Thus we conclude with the following remarks. Theorem 0 0.2 is a local existence theorem and discuss the existence only in a small neighborhood of initial point. The proof of the above theorem requires Lipschitz continuity of the nonlinear function even when only existence is required. Regarding the existence of a solution of 1, theorem 0 0.2 is not the only and the best result. We may have existence of solution without uniqueness. One such important result is stated as follows. Suppose f is continuous on the inter rectangle R and suppose mod f t x is less or equal to m for all points t x belongs to R. Then alpha be the smaller of the positive numbers a and b by m. Then there is a solution x of the differential equation 1 that satisfies the initial condition 2 existing on the interval mod t minus t 0 less or equal to alpha. Summing up, we have just learned about the existence and the uniqueness property of the first order differential equation. Now I am sure it is clear giving a differential equation you can easily check whether it has a unique solution or more than one solution or no solution. This brings to the end of chapter 2. Thank you.